There are no rules in skincare. Guidelines and suggestions, yes, but almost no hard rules. Except this one. If you don't apply enough product, you will not get the sun protection claimed on the bottle. And enough product is usually more than you would have thought. So it is handy that the Dr. Sam Flawless Daily Sunscreen tells you the right amount on the packaging. Three pounds. And yes, that is a lot. How that works for me and who I think this is a great sunscreen for is what we're going to talk about today. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. A cosmetically allergen broad spectrum dream that defies your preconceptions about sunscreen, like a silky safety belt for your skin. It comes and cuddles blemish prone skin with a soft focus primer like finish and makes your morning routine run smoothly, non comedogenic and fragrance free. The sunscreen feels like a firm moisturizer and very hydrating. While there is no real scent, I do notice a white cast when applying the recommended three pumps and that is despite me being pretty pale. If your skin tone is any deeper than this, this will most likely be an issue. According to the packaging, you need three pumps for the face alone and three additional pumps if you want to do your neck as well. And I can tell you, three pumps is a lot of product for someone with an average sized head like me. The best way I found it to work is by dotting it all over my face and then spreading it going over the areas repeatedly until there is an even film. At that point there is still a noticeable white cast and the feeling of a layer of product on my face that I am not a fan of. This layer will get better with time but the extra paleness never completely goes away and the finish is much dearer than I personally like it. It does work really well underneath makeup though, which will help with the white cast. A quick look at the ingredient leaves gives a possible explanation for the added paleness. It is a mixed sunscreen using both chemical filters, octinoxide and the physical one, zinc oxide nano, and the latter one is probably responsible for that. Why these two were chosen over a variety of other potential filters that we in Europe have access to is a good question. I assume it is for two reasons. First, because Dr. Sam seems to prefer zinc oxide when it comes to treating skin that is easily irritated, something I personally don't agree on with her. And second, because this combination of filters is following American sunscreen guidelines as the newer filters aren't allowed over there, making distribution easier. Other than these two, you will find niacinamide, humectants, shea butter and squalane, a base formula that isn't that different from what her moisturizer contains. Now, you might have sensed it already, I am not a fan, at least not on my skin. While I think this might be nice if your skin is normal to dry, I really can't see how this would work for someone whose skin is more on the oily side. My preferences are set by the access to more modern filters though, so if you live in the US, you might feel different about the texture. It gets very good reviews from content creators over there. The only way for me to make it work though would be to apply less of it, like half of the recommended amount, and that way I would not get an SPF 50, so don't feel tempted to do that. I mean, a little protection is always better than none, and if you're indoors all day, it might be enough, but as someone prone to pigmentation, I try to earn the sight of a caution and use a product that I can slather myself in without feeling uncomfortable. Have you tried the sunscreen? If there's anything you would like to add, please do so in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram, blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon. Bye!